Pena was taken into custody yesterday afternoon following a standoff with a SWAT team. Albuquerque police say he conspired with and paid cash to other to four other men to shoot up the homes of four Democrats. The shootings took place between December the 4th and January 3rd. One of the lawmakers, State Senator Linda Lopez, says three of the bullets passed through her 10-year-old daughter's bedroom, just over the bed where she slept. Investigators write in the newly released arrest warrant that Pena went along for one drive by at Lopez's home and even pulled the trigger of an AR he was armed with, but that it jammed. The other assailant's gun did not. Quote, witness stated that Solomon further expressed discontent that the shootings were late at night. Solomon wanted the shootings to be more aggressive. Solomon wanted them to aim lower and shoot around 8 p.m. because occupants would more likely not be laying down. Several of the lawmakers, including Commissioner Adrian Barboa, say Pena actually visited them at their homes to complain about the results of the election just days or weeks before the shootings. Yeah, he came to my house after the election, and he's an election denier. He weaponized those dangerous thoughts to threaten me and others, causing serious tra trauma. Um, yeah, he was saying that the elections were fake, that um, really speaking erratically, I didn't feel threatened at the time, but I did feel like he was, um, you know, erratic. And that tracks with what authorities said at a press conference last night. APD essentially discovered what we had all feared and what we had suspected, that these shootings were indeed politically motivated. And that has basically been confirmed by this investigation. You know, as the mayor said, he's, a, he's an election denier. He doesn't want to accept the results of the election. So he approached all of these commissioners and the senators at their home with paperwork claiming that they were, um, there was fraud involved in those elections. I think they all expressed that they were puzzled and, and surprised. One actually led to a, a, quite an argument, I believe. So I think that is, plays into some of this, but it was shortly after that is when the shootings occurred. Pena was vocal about his anger over his election loss on social media, tweeting this photo of himself after Election Day and saying he never conceded his race, which, by the way, he lost by a huge margin. His opponent got more than 73 percent of the vote. That didn't stop Pena from insisting the election was rigged. The evidence against Pena in the shootings includes weapons police have recovered, cell phone records, surveillance footage, multiple witnesses, at least one of whom says he was present for one of the shootings. But Pena was pretty close to being disqualified from even running based on his criminal history. Pena apparently led a crew that smashed their way into big box retailers using stolen cars and loading it up with stolen goods. His Democratic opponent, who eventually won the election, Representative Miguel Garcia, even challenged Pena's candidacy in court. But a judge ruled he could stay on the ballot, saying a state law that bars felons from holding office unless they get a pardon from the governor was unconstitutional. And state GOP leaders stood up for him at the time. Matt Garcia Sierra, communications director for the House GOP leadership, said, as someone who was raised in the South Valley, I'm disappointed to see so-called civil rights activists attempt to use this example of this young Hispanic man who turned his life around for their political movement. Joining me now is Harold Medina, chief of the Albuquerque Police Department. Chief, thanks a lot for coming on the program. Appreciate it. So talk to us about the evidence. Talk to us about what led you to this guy in the first place. You know, this is a case of uh, a lot of cooperation between various agencies and a huge investment in technology to the Albuquerque Police Department over the past several years. Uh, we know that uh, we had had some shootings. We were concerned that they were related. But the big break in this case came uh, unknowingly to the Albuquerque Police Department. Uh, Senator Lopez's house was shot up, and about an hour later, a Sheriff's Department deputy unknowingly pulled over a vehicle uh, for a simple uh, driving violation. Uh, the individual is found to have a warrant. Uh, the individual is placed under arrest. And during the inventory of that vehicle, two firearms are recovered and tagged into evidence. Uh, we believe in Nibens. We believe in ballistic matching uh, shell casings. And at the same time that this was occurring and the sheriff's deputy was conducting this arrest, uh, an APD officer had gotten a shot spotter alert, had gone out and recovered some shell casings that they found in the street. The deputy didn't even know that the senator's house had been hit. We tagged the shell casings into evidence and they went into the Niven system. And when the guns came in from the sheriff's department and they go to our crime lab, 
they were matched uh, to the shell casings at uh, Lopez's residence, and we were able to tie that this individual was involved. And from there, the case just started to move forward. I'm going to summarize it, Chief, and say it was good police work. Um, thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.